Hi, welcome to a vlog. Now look, um, talk a bit about the show, uh, NEC show, what was it like? Well, everybody I spoke to was here, it was a very difficult show. It was a hard show. The October show wasn't an easy show either, but the February show was hard and a lot of people unfairly, I think, blaming the February show, uh, when the February show used to be a very good show at one time. The trouble is, the way I see it, is that unless you stimulate the market, you're not going to get people to come and have a look. People aren't going to come and have a look at what they'd seen already in October. Why bother? They want to come and see if there's anything new appeared. Well, Coachman had brought a couple of new motorhomes out which were very smart, and two new camper vans which were very good. Um, and apart from that, and Bailey having a couple of new layouts, it was pretty much business as usual. Now I just heard about Eldis uh, laying off about 190 people and I put this on the um, Cameron Industry Facebook page. Now it's, it's, it's created a lot of, lot of talk actually. Uh, people go, no oh, I'm not surprised it's sat the other and whatever. Now look, uh, when I'm doing my reviews on Eldis, I've always said, especially on the Explore range, they're overdue for upgrading and 2025 is supposed to be the year that this is going to happen. Uh, same with the motorhomes too. Elders have got a little bit stayed I think over the years. Yes they've altered the Crusader, they've put the Crusader shell um, out of the Buccaneer shell but I think another big problem was they dropped Compass and I just don't think they should have done that. Compass should have been actually, um, how can I put it, um, really progressed as a brand. Um, it was it echoed the cut the eldest's range, um, just with a different interior, and I think it needs to be radically different, really. Now the thing is, as well, they built up a lot of customers, they built up a lot of dealers who were now selling the Compass brand, and all of a sudden to have that taken away from you as a dealer, all of a sudden lose your high and dry. Now this has led to some like my local dealer Westfield Cairns bringing in Andreas, and I'll come to them again in a minute. Um, the problem is, is that uh, when Eldis did that, or we're going to call it Ham Group, they literally lost a lot of dealerships. Um, and I think the problem was, I mean I can see what they're trying to do is utilise production and everything, but I still think that Compass still had a, a place, and I think the way things are going, um, they still would have been around, and I think Compasses would have done relatively okay, but I think they need a radical change and and they just missed the bus as far as I was concerned. Now again going to Andrea at the stand at the NEC, their stand was a very small, I've not seen Andrea stand that small for many 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 years. Uh, they had a couple of caravans on there and a couple of motorhomes and that was it. Now um, I've got a few, I know a lot of deals after 30 odd years and 40 plus years of doing the rounds um, <clears throat> I've got to know a lot of people um, <clears throat> very very well who tell me as it is now I'm hearing that Adris are, are struggling uh, in the UK uh, there's no danger from going it's just that they're not having a good time of it um, now if you were to ask me about them I think the Alpine range is uh, well, I think that's far too expensive. It just looks a very big heap of a car on to me. I just don't rate it. Um, I think the build quality of this is brilliant. No, nothing about that. But I just like the three hog grill on a nearly you know, like a forty hundred grand van. Uh, sorry, no, that's not good for me. I want something a bit special. I don't want the same cookers getting the Altair almost. Now, the trouble is, as I say, they've sort of lost a few dealers, gained one or two. Now my next bit of news was that I've heard this a few times now is that Bailey have sort of really been stirring up the old hornet's nest. So you say to me, well why is that? How's that? Well what Bailey tend to be doing at the moment from what I can hear um, this is what I've heard sort of from people uh, in the know they've told me Bailey are deciding to shove their basically um, Bailey branded tourers and motors into dealerships where they wouldn't have once gone. Um, 
in other words trying to get as much product out there into dealers to basically mop up the market I suppose. Now they did this once before with Pegasus when Pegasus was launched in 2010 all of a sudden all the dealers who were wanting Bay they'd love to have had Baileys because they had the fantastic pageants and the, um, the senators and the courts of rangers that could sell all day long they couldn't have them but as soon as Pegasus came out on the scene all of a sudden Bailey dealership seemed to be sort of handed out a bit like confetti and of course then we had the Olympus that followed that and the story goes on to Unicorn now they seem to be doing the same thing now um, I don't know what that entails I don't mean to say that they're sort of thinking well look you know let's just get these let's get these vans wherever we can uh, now the trouble with that of course is this can also it's upset your um, already established dealers and I think it has upset some but I'll give you more news on that as I hear it um, also as I say we, we as I say we saw the eldest the, 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 the staff go now Elders aren't finished by any means and the way we're talking on the Facebook page is like they've gone kaputted and they haven't. Um, I was up there two years ago, uh, oh no, 18 months ago and they'd spent a lot of money on a, on a new quality control. Uh, they'd also set a plan out to spend I think 15 or 20 million on that factory. Whether that still goes ahead, I don't know. Under the current conditions, I probably don't think it will do. Now we've got to admit caravan sales are down dramatically, they're about 11,000 12,000 now, that's very very low. Um, Covid, loads of demand of course, and anybody who's, who knew the, knew the Runyons basically knew that after Covid that things would go that way. And everybody who knew the industry knew that would happen, but they didn't expect it to go like that, they expected it to go like that. Of course we had then the Ukraine thing and Mr Putin of the Berg decides to go and invade another country and then everything's the sanctions on them, that means a lot of gas and oil and it means everything goes up, it causes a massive problem, the cost of living and of course this obviously puts up manufactured goods and also it means that people who could probably buy a caravan now can't really buy a brand new caravan anymore, you know they're going to have to think long and hard and save up that little bit longer. And of course, interest rates go on borrowing. Again, all these are sort of bad news. Now, this sort of thing's always happened. Um, I'm not saying the, the Ukraine thing, but in 73, 74, two big things happened there with the car industry. You had the oil crisis, which meant there was petrol rationing. There was a three day a week. Then there was VAT that went on to caravans. And it literally killed the cowing industry off virtually overnight. From selling 60,000 new caravans a year in the UK, all the manufacturers, because there was about 30 other manufacturers, they were down to them selling 30, 40,000. That was a big drop. And of course, when 74 models came in, they were expensive and people were still recovering from the three day week. So sales saw discounts. Now, 75 and 76 were not brilliant years in the cabin industry. A lot of companies went into liquidation. Um, some of the old, old die-hard companies went. Um, and that was unfortunate, it was very sad. Now, we haven't got that fallback of different companies. There was those other companies that came along and started up again. By the 80s, early 80s, 1980, 81, 82, 83, the industry took another big dive and again some names like Astral Carolines went, Thompson Carolines went and the big CI Caravan Group went. These were big manufacturers um, who'd been around for some years and had been very popular. Um, and yes, some of the products had gone downhill but some of them were still good products but that was the way it was, it was a bit dog eat dog. So, you had your ABI, they were doing massive discounting. Casalt Caravans, who did Abbey Caravans, Pipers, they were also doing big discounting. So it was a real sort of bit of a dog-eat-dog until 84, 85 when the market went back up again and things kicked off. Now, I remember when 
in the mid 90s um, the market again having a bit of a drive off um, and this is how it goes in the cabin industry um, you know I've been around long enough to, to witness these you know in the 50s and 60s uh, 50s I wasn't around and the 60s well I wasn't around really properly until the mid to late 60s um, uh, and I didn't understand the current industry then, although I was starting to learn about it. Um, it was all on a high, um, and everybody thought that was going to go on forever, amen. But I remember one manufacturer, uh, ABI Caravans, or Ace Caravans as it were then, the guy who started them, Terry Reid, he actually predicted that one day there would literally only be a handful of caravan manufacturers left. And that has come very true. So, Yes, the uh, market's not looking good. Um, the used market, of course, prices have, have gone up, but there's going to be some discounting going on. Now, somebody came along, some bright spark, when he will remain nameless, um, I was saying uh, the other day on social media that uh, good dealers will do well. Uh, and that was the case. Personally, I don't quite believe that. Uh, experience says, I know some good dealers. Yes, they'll pick up what trade there is, but they're not going to do fantastically well when the market is pretty flat. So at the end of the day, um, the market is really leveled out. It's a perfect storm, wasn't it? You know, the COVID thing and then the downturn, then the cost of living. If the cost of living thing hadn't gone on, I'm sure we'd all be sort of nicely, just literally um, uh, running along nicely. Um, so there'd be none of that uh, business now of, of the way we're in. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, caravan factory shutting down, is, as I say, is nothing new, but these days we can't afford to lose any more. Uh, I was talking to one of the big manufacturers the other day, and they were just saying the same thing. We don't want to see anybody go. You know, one time, years ago, they'd say, oh, they've gone. That's somebody out, somebody left, that's, they're out of the way. Um, but these days it is different. So where the caravan future, the future line caravans? Well, the dark cloud on the horizon, like I've been saying now for a few years, was the electric car and what that's going to do and how that's going to have the knock-on effect. Um, obviously, this other thing now with the with the price of caravans going up uh, is affecting things, but also it's the size. So as an end user, using your caravan, your caravan insurance has gone up. Also as your storage, because a lot of new houses now, you can't store a caravan on your driveway. A lot of them, because we've got them going around between axles, so that's out of the way. Others don't allow it. Um, so it's, it's some people are just saying, you know what, I'll get a motorhome, because at least I can put it on my drive and it's not a caravan. It's like it's a vehicle, you know, so a lot of people get away with it. So, as a caravan come its full term, well, I've, again, um, about 10 years ago, uh, me and a colleague were talking about this, and we sort of foresaw that this could happen, uh, the way things were going. That was before the electric car. We just thought this could be the case where the touring caravan will get overtaken by the motorhome. And, and, that, seems, and that seems to be happening. Now, whether that's going to remain so, <laughs> Again, it remains to be seen because motorhome prices have gone up, they've shut up. You've got all your camper van manufacturers, there's far too many out there. Some of those will go by the wayside. I'm sure there'll be a few motorhome manufacturers where uh, mainly it'll be imports will just stop importing. Um, will we see any dealers go? I think we will. Um, we might be in for a shock. Uh, I'm not going to say my suspicions because that wouldn't be fair. Uh, but I have got my suspicions. Uh, again, it's one of keeping me into the ground. Um, and I hear all sorts of things, and I won't repeat them on YouTube or on social media, full stop. Um, but um, I've had reliable sources, and I think there's going to be something happen probably over the next few months. But we'll see. Well, have I predicted it right? Have I read the tea leaves? Who knows? Um, Next thing, last, uh, last but not least, is if you remember the video on the uh, classic camera rescue, uh, me and my friend Andy and his lad, um, I went to video them rescuing what should be a plain simple rescue out of a, out of a driveway, uh, and it wasn't, it was a bit more involved. Um, and Andy told me many times of all the problems he's had. Uh, basically, what he does, he hires a trailer. A good tread or the winch on it, 
he takes a few bits and pieces with him that he stores um, you know to uh, to be able to you know to strap something to strap strap a caravan on and he trailers the caravans back now what I've gone to agree to because Andy's always been a bit camera shy uh, he's always when I've been doing any classic stuff usually um, he's the one that's been behind the camera and he's done all that he never wants to be on camera and I, I you know I, I respected that um, but I had a, we had a bit of chat I said and there's people coming on saying what's going to happen to that Sprite wouldn't it be great to see it being done well Andy has agreed to do that and what he's been doing for me he's been doing some video clips because he lives about three hours two no, two to three hours drive away from me and because he's got lots of things going on I've got lots of things going on you know to get across and meet up to do any sort of filming to do any restora restoration work on a regular basis is virtually a possibility at the moment so he's agreed to do me some video snips and he sent me some today and I'm really pleased I'm really quite excited because I'm going to introduce this uh, video I'm going to edit his videos around but I think he's done a bit of a sterling job personally because he's a bit camera shy you know, and he, you know, he's, he's not used to it. He doesn't. He, he likes to keep out of the limelight. Um, he just likes to get on with things. But he's going to tell us why he wanted to to save the sprite, uh, this 1959 musketeer, and what he's doing, and also some of the pitfalls he already found. I mean, he um, he rang me the other day and he said, "Well, William's got a big problem." He said, "There's a split in the chassis, and it's um, the, the van's leaning over." And he couldn't work this out, but anyway, he found out why. And he, he thinks at some stage that the caravan has hit something very hard and it's not done it as good. It's repairable, but it's something he hadn't actually uh, built into his, his restoration program. And this is what you've got to be careful of. If you're going to restore a classic caravan, the amount of people go, sell me a caravan, uh, oh, I have no time to work on it, or this, that, and the other. In other words, what it usually means is, I'm so, you know, I got this on, I thought it was going to be a doddle. Actually, not quite as easy as I thought. So you've got to have some skill, you've got to have some knowledge. And Andy's really, really good. Uh, apart from that, he's a good music, musician, good guitar player as well. Um, but anyway, that's about the pie. But at the, at the end of the day, he does some great, great jobs. And um, this video clip, I think it's going to be really interesting. I'm really quite excited about it, because as I say, I brought him from around the back of the camera to the front of the camera. To, 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 to talk us through it better than what I could do. Um, I'm very interested in it and I can't wait to, to, to start getting that all edited up and put those uh, the first video on. Uh, we may do it in two parts, I'll have to see what it's looking like. So we shall have to watch all this uh, over the next coming uh, months. Um, they've stopped advertising with, in camera magazines, which I think was a very foolhardy thing to do as well. Um, I'm not saying that people don't know they're around, they've got social media, but social media can only do so much. And I think social media, you know, anybody and everybody can have an opinion, whether it's the right one or not, um, can basically, you know, if, I, if I'm if i looking for a new car, which I'm not going to be able to have, but if I was looking for a new car, what I always do, I look for the proper... Um, uh, professional writer pr uh, reviews on it. People have experienced driving lots of different cars in that segment I'm looking at uh, and they may compare it to X car, Y car. Um, so I think social media can be a good thing. I mean, yes, if people buy a car because I recommend it, well, that's very well and good, but I always sort of say, you know, go and see something else. But this is what I would have. But I'm not saying to you, go and buy that because it's the best, because I don't think that's the right thing to do. Because you may buy it and say, do you know what? It's not as good as we thought. Andy, you told us it was going to be a great van. I said, nah, basically, only buy it. I like it. I think this is good. To and if it fits your criteria, then that's the van for you, probably. So anyway, um, uh, that's 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 school. Uh, I don't get sponsored by anybody. Um, so I've no free covers from me from to be caravan or or a free site anywhere or anything like that. If I do have a free site or whatever, I would actually say, uh, courtesy of Fred Blog's caravan site. Um, but otherwise, I'm purely independent um, and I don't really want to suck up to any manufacturer. Yes, I like the products and yes, I mean, some of, you know, uh, some manufacturer stuff I don't particularly like. Um, and I'll say it. 
So, after all that long one, sorry it's been a long vlog, um, uh, I'll leave you to it and I'll get back to you again soon. And um, we'll get down on the dealer's forecourt and we'll have a look around at what the prices are, maybe ask a few questions to a salesman and just sort of say what should we be doing. I'm going to go and see Mark in uh, the caravan place at some stage, a uh, bit of known Mark for a long time now and um, we uh, he talks to he, you know, he, he talks really from from here not sort of giving the give me the bull uh, and he knows that and vice versa so we're going to do something together on a video for him and a uh, video for me so hopefully we're going to get around to doing that this spring we were going to do it last year but we didn't do because of various things so anyway oh just one thing that that isn't my Teletubby, honestly. That's my granddaughter's. That's one of uh, four of them, apparently. Uh, my daughter was always into Teletubbies, and now my granddaughter is, and uh, usually she won't go anywhere without... I don't know if that's poem. I couldn't tell you. I don't want to start going too much detail, otherwise uh, you'll think I watch the Teletubbies. Anyway, sit there, my friend. Um, that's it. So, um, see you on the next vlog. Uh, please keep watching, please keep subscribing and also please go onto the Cavern History Facebook page. There's also the Cavern History Book Facebook page. There's also the uh, Holiday Home Heritage page Facebook. The ABI um, Facebook that I put on for people who like ABI vans like I do. I've got to update that actually. It's quite because I've got lots and lots of stuff to put on about ABI. Um, and, um, and yeah. Please keep looking and please keep looking at the videos. Right, I'm off. Before you all fall asleep, listen to boring old Andy going on. Because <clears throat> I don't know I am.